When I was eight years old and I lived in the rural areas in Texas, I had dreams about what the world ought to be like, the kind of stuff that our parents and grandparents had talked to us about where we could have some say of our lives. And if you could find the right place and the right rhythm and get things moving in the right direction, we would come out with the best of all possible worlds. Things was beginning to move in the South. Uh, the people, the civil rights movement was moving there, and, and I kind of got a little bit uncomfortable here because I felt like I had ran away from a struggle to a better place. We began to intensify the organization of certain groups, the NAACP, church groups, you know, the, the whole confluence and influence of all this period did develop a kind of a, a renaissance, a kind of a cultural, social, educational elite in the area that tended to go out from this area and do things in other communities. The Committee of the Poor created a burst of community organizing in 1963. New organizations emerged, along with an excitement about the potential of a now predominantly black community. So I come to realize that, my gosh, it doesn't really matter how I started out. This is where I was going to end up. This was Nairobi. For a week and a half now, some 250 young Negroes have been beating the pavement here in East Palo Alto, circulating a questionnaire. The young people are all members of East Palo Alto's Teen Summer Project, working in conjunction with a name change committee for the Municipal Council. That committee is headed by Donald Reed. I feel that uh, part of the problem this country faces is that uh, we have a lot of names of European origin, but we don't have any names of African origin. Although the ballot measure failed, the spirit of Nairobi drew people together to confront problems faced by African Americans throughout the country. Poverty, unemployment, police brutality, and quality of education. 